Hey guys, I have seen a lot of interesting questions come through on my Apple Watch Series 10 review video, so I thought I'd go through and answer some. I've been wearing the Series 10 for two, maybe almost three weeks now, so hopefully I'll be able to help you out a bit if you're wondering whether you should buy the new Apple Watch. Again, these are all your questions, but if there's anything else you wanna know or things I haven't discussed yet, just let me know in the comments of this video. Otherwise, let's get into it. First up, I want to plan about buy Apple Watch, wait. <laughs> Huh? I want to plan to buy iPhone 10 series. I think I'm guessing they mean Apple Watch series. So please, can you suggest a size, whether it's 42 or 46 millimeters, which fit my wrist size 240 millimeters? Do we have a ruler? It. Yeah, it's right there. <laughs> I use the metric system. Thank you. I use the metric system. So I need to see what 240 millimeters would look like. So this is centimeters. 240, so that's 24. I feel like that's a really big wrist. Look, I don't think there's any rule that tells you what size Apple Watch you should get based on your wrist size, but I think 24 centimeters or 240 millimeters is a pretty large wrist. I generally think that the Apple Watch Series 10 in 46 millimeters would probably look a bit more, what's the word I'm looking for? Pro proportional, it would look more proportional. Series 10 has a number of useful upgrades this year, so why not the battery? Sad face, crying face. Why not the battery? You know, I ask this question every year, and instead of actually increasing the battery or the battery life, I think that this person is referring to, Apple has instead opted to make changes to efficiency and the display and kind of the overall power of the watch without compromising battery life. So like, think about it, when the watch gets brighter, when the display gets bigger, when the performance is more demanding and it can do more. It takes more power, more battery to run those things. So Apple has kind of remained committed to not lowering the battery life expectancy, even though it's still making all of these improvements in other ways. Do I wish we got more than an 18 hour battery life? Of course, that's actually why I usually wear the Apple Watch Ultra because you get closer to two days of battery life. The Garmin fans always come out whenever a new Apple Watch is announced, just saying how the battery life can't be compared. And that's so valid. If you really need a smartwatch with great battery life, maybe an Apple Watch isn't right for you. But I don't think it's fair to say that the battery hasn't been upgraded when it has been upgraded to match some of those new efficiency demands. Girl, I'm confused between jet black or rose gold color. Anyone have advice for me? And I've never owned an Apple Watch before. Well, if you are going to be getting your first Apple Watch, congratulations, that's very exciting. Second, in terms of colors, some people are complaining that there are maybe not as many interesting colors this year. As a reminder, we have jet black, silver, and rose gold. This is the jet black here on my wrist, but in my review video, I had the rose gold color, which is also really nice. In terms of which one to get, I would say it comes down to whether you want something that's more shiny or matte. The jet black is cool because it's polished aluminum. This is a first for Apple Watch, and it has this more like shiny, it catches the light real nice. It might look a bit more premium in some ways in that regard, but the rose gold is also really nice. There's gonna be no mistaking it for an Apple Watch. I think it goes really well with jewelry if that's something that you wear and want to have matched. If you're not totally sure, and again, you're getting your first Apple Watch, it's gonna be an investment. You wanna pick the right one for you. In this case, I might recommend going to the store, checking them out. You don't need an appointment or anything just to go try on the different colors and see which one you think matches your style. Oh, we have a similar question. I feel like jet black fits more men, right? No, 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 no. I saw multiple comments like this, actually. We are not going to be gendering which colors, like there's no color for men, color for women. Like they're just colors. It depends on your preference. I've had women in my comments saying they love the jet black. That's what they're doing. I've had men saying they love the rose gold. It doesn't matter, like get, get the wash color that you like. There doesn't need to be one for men, one for women. I don't wanna see any more comments about this, guys, okay? Thank you for this detailed video. You're welcome. Can you please tell me if the wristbands are interchangeable between the Series 9 and Series 10? That is actually a great question because leading up to the launch, there were some rumors that Apple would be changing the band system, but they did not. So all of the bands that you already have for your Apple Watch will work for the new one as long as you have the corresponding sizes. So if you have a Series 9, you go to Series 10. Series 9, you would have a 41 or 45 millimeter. On the Series 10, you will have a 42 or a 40 
46 millimeter. The 41 matches the 42, the 45 matches the 46. Those bands will work either way. And in case you didn't know, that's also the case for the Apple Watch Ultra. The 45 slash 46 size bands also work for the 49 millimeter Apple Watch Ultra. Oh my God, that was a lot of math. <laughs> I hope I explained that in a clear way. I just, the numbers, you know. Moving along, how is the apnea detection supposed to work without the blood oxygen sensor? That's a good question. I did see multiple comments about this. Now, this person's talking about the sleep apnea detection feature that was announced alongside the Series 10, though it also works for the Series 9 and Apple Watch Ultra 2. If you watched my review video, I talked about the deal with the blood oxygen sensor app, how it's not available in the US due to the ongoing patent dispute but it's actually not the blood oxygen sensor that's informing the sleep apnea detection feature. It's Apple's accelerometer that's powering those insights. Listen, this was actually pulled from the product description. This feature uses the watch's built-in accelerometer to detect motion and airflow patterns. So the nitty gritty of how it actually works is still kind of vague. I don't think Apple would actually go out and share that information, but I've been using the feature since it became available a couple of weeks ago. And so far it's pretty on par with like what my understanding of my sleep is. I know I don't have sleep apnea. I know I sleep well through the night. I'm not getting any breathing disturbances alerts, but if this is something that you'd want to know more about or if I should do a separate video about, let me know in the comments. Does the aluminum Apple Watch Series 10 have a sapphire screen like the Ultra 2 and the stainless steel watches? So first thing wrong with that question is Apple no longer makes stainless steel watches. The more premium Apple Watch Series 10 is actually a titanium material, so a bit of a difference there. But to answer your question, no, the Apple Watch Series 10 aluminum, which this one is, does not have a sapphire glass display. It has something called Ion X front glass. This is a type of glass that Apple has used on the Apple Watch, the aluminum watch, I should say, for years now. And no, it is not as scratch resistant as the sapphire crystal display. So not recommended for maybe more rugged activities if you have a job that you're very hands-on manual labor things like that i know that all kind of sounds bad but there is a positive or a trade-off in that the ion x glass is more lighter weight than sapphire crystal so that helps with the apple watch series 10 being around 10 percent lighter i believe than last year's apple watch would you upgrade from the apple watch series 8 mm, that's a good question so the Apple Watch Series 8 came out two years ago. I don't think that people need to be replacing their Apple Watch every two years. I think phones are kind of different. There's a lot of incentives to get the new iPhone every year, but the Apple Watch doesn't need to follow the same kind of program. If you ask me, the biggest non-starter when it comes to whether it's time to upgrade your Apple Watch is whether your watch supports the latest software update, which in this case is watchOS 11. If you've been holding on to your Apple Watch Series 5, Apple Watch Series 4, and God forbid, Apple Watch Series 3 or newer, I would say you're probably due for an upgrade, especially if your Apple Watch is something that you wear mostly regularly. There's honestly not that much major between the Apple Watch Series 8 and Apple Watch Series 10 that I think maybe the average user would care about. So I would hold on to your Apple Watch Series 8 for at least another year. But hey, if you're curious, I would check those trade-in values because your Apple Watch Series 8 might be worth a good sum towards getting a new watch if that seems worth it to you. If I go with the 10, what will I miss out from not choosing the Ultra 2 and vice versa? Is the slimmer 10 better for overall use in terms of shirts, jackets, and so on? Huh. I'm interpreting it as this person cares more about the fit and feel, so it's one of those cases where I think I should better show you than tell you. All right. Here I have the Apple Watch Ultra 2 in satin black. I posted an unboxing on our TikTok, which you should go check out, but I wanted to put it on to show you the difference in thickness in the two watches. I could pull up the measurements on Apple's website, but I think you're seeing what I'm seeing, that the Apple Watch Series 10 is much thinner than the Apple Watch Ultra 2. I'll take it off for a moment. I wore the right shirt today. I'm wearing like a form-fitting black long sleeve shirt. And yeah, it definitely, like as I'm pulling my sleeve up, definitely does get caught in the watch. I have to put it over. It's very clear. It's like, what am I hiding under there? Am I James Bond type of thing? Bond. James Bond. Now, if I put the Series 10 back on my wrist, the feel is night and day. 
There's really not much that the Apple Watch Series 10 gets that the Apple Watch Ultra 2 doesn't. It has the new Tides app. It, as I mentioned earlier, it gets sleep apnea detection. But there are some key benefits to the Apple Watch Ultra 2 compared to the Apple Watch Series 10. We already talked about the sapphire crystal display. You have a titanium design. You have the added action button and the 86 decibel siren. But what I think matters to most people is the fact that the Apple Watch Ultra 2 has a much longer battery life. I can go on a weekend trip without charging it and that's just a game changer for a lot of people. All right guys, we made it to the last question. Is it justified to buy the Series 10 with cellular? It irks me how Apple charges an extra $100 for cellular support on the watches. The Apple Watch Series 10 starts at $399, but then if you get the version with cellular enabled, it goes up to $499. And some people don't realize that even though you pay for the cellular supporting version, you then still need to pay your carrier a monthly fee in order to have the cellular connection. I use Verizon, I think it's about $10 per month. So that means that the cost doesn't end beyond just paying for the cellular upgrade. For those who aren't familiar with what cellular means, it basically means that the iPhone supports your phone service. So it kind of like extends your phone's number to your watch. If you leave your phone at home, you go out, or your phone just isn't in range of your Apple Watch, you'll be able to answer calls, send text messages, use the Maps app, call an Uber, anything else that you would be able to do on your watch if it was connected to your phone. A feature like this is really popular among runners or people who do outdoor sports, meaning that they don't have to have their phone on them, but they can still stay connected. There's some great peace of mind in a feature like this, or how about for people who just tend to leave their phone at home? I'm talking to you, mom. That way you know that you can still answer a call. The amount of times that my mom leaves for the grocery store without her phone and I need to text her to get something that I forgot to say before she left, if she had a cellular watch, that wouldn't be a problem. So it's really important to note that you have to make this decision when you're going to buy your Apple Watch. If you get an Apple Watch without cellular support and then decide you want it, your watch isn't gonna work even if you're ready to pay your carrier that monthly fee. If you think there's even a chance you're gonna want a feature like that, I would go ahead and get the cellular version. I appreciate everyone who sent in some questions. I hope I was able to help even if it was just a little bit or maybe I even answered some questions you didn't even know you had. If there is anything else you wanna know about the Apple Watch Series 10, be sure to go check out my full review video. There could be some more context in there. And if you're looking to upgrade the rest of your devices, Apple just came out with a bunch of stuff. We have some great videos. We have reviews, unboxings, photo face-offs, all that good stuff. And of course, on TikTok, at Tom's Guide, is where you're gonna see far more behind the scenes with testing all of the new products. Thanks for watching, guys. Again, let me know if you have any questions about the Apple Watch Series 10. Otherwise, I'll catch you next time.